Hey everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us today on Comics from the Future. It is Friday and we are so happy to see you. If you have not, please take a second and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really appreciate it, seeing our community grow every single week. And let's introduce ourselves. My name is Megan. <laughs> I'm Andy. And I'm Jason. We're with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're all steel, steel. Still reeling from watching Spider-Man last night. We all watched Spider-Man together at the huge IMAX Aquarium Theater that we have in town. And it was awesome, but that's all you're going to hear from us about it. <laughs> yeah, this is our Tuesday show where we only mildly spoil things. <laughs> My one complaint, there weren't enough characters. Oh, no. There just weren't enough characters <laughs> or surprises. <laughs> so, I just. <laughs> yeah, hopefully a lot of you have seen it already and got to enjoy it or get to see it soon. So, all right, well, this is the show where we're going to go over what is coming up in the comic world. We're going to go over some new series that are going to be launching, some cool covers we don't want you to miss, and all that good stuff. For most shops, your orders will be due this Sunday or Monday. For us, it's Sunday. Um, let them know so you can guarantee your order. All right, so this is a bit of a small week because we're heading into the holidays. A lot of the stuff that's coming out in January, they tacked on the previous weeks. So there is actually no DC on this week. Mm -hmm. All that was done the previous week. Mm -hmm. So there'll be, there will be DC out every week of January. Just nothing to order this time. Uh, and Marvel, pretty light as well. Yeah. So there are a few noteworthy um, comics to talk about, though. So let's start. This is not just our feature. This is our featured and all the number ones that are available. Mm -hmm. We just clumped them all since this is about <laughs> like half as many comics to go over as usual. So just to show you, there are some really noteworthy ones. First off, we have Saga number 55. It <laughs> returns after all this time. The uh, climactic second half of the series begins by Brian K. Vaughn and with art from Fiona Staples. Of course, Saga has won multiple awards, uh, multiple literary awards, comic awards. It has been translated into 20 different languages. Wow. So, yeah, what would that feel like to write something and know that <laughs> people speaking languages you don't even know are reading yeah. it and discussing what you said? So anyhow, uh, this is the first issue back in a while. I wonder how many people whose poll list it was on, they've changed software, things <laughs> have just, you know, make sure your shop still has you ordering this if you want. And another thing is we've sold so many trade paperbacks that I wonder if a lot of those people aren't ready to jump on mm -hmm. the individual issues. Yeah, so, this gave people plenty of time to catch up on SOG. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. So a lot of people I know were reading it, got their friend into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's time to call everybody up, round everyone together, uh, because I think people could miss this. I mean, here it is. got to order it right with the holidays. Mm -hmm. There's only one cover. There's no variant. There's no incentives. Um, so they're kind of rolling it out a little bit. It's kind of quiet. weird. Like, Saga originally came out back when they didn't really do that many variant covers. Mm -hmm. At least Image did. Correct. They would do maybe the one, and that's it. Yeah. Why? How times have changed. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to so. go ahead and predict that this will sell out. It will go to a second printing. And I think this will actually be pretty hot with no incentives to make stores boost up their sales. Yeah. I can see this being underordered. Yeah, yeah. A lot of stores don't really know, like, Who's going to come back for this? And it's been a tough couple of years. So. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, you know, the final issues before this, you know, very, very dark, emotional ending that now we get to see the fallout from. <laughs> so, anyway, here is your, here's your warning. Saga number 55, it, it begins again. Or, order away, folks, and tell your friends. <laughs> Yeah, Call I, them, you haven't talked to them in years. I know, there'll be some people who are like, oh, I, I quit I quit getting comics a couple years ago, and it's like, Saga's back, I'm back there. Yeah. All right, next up is a pretty special one. So this is The Color of Always. It is an LGBTQIA anthology, and this is actually a Kickstarter book. And the reason we are featuring it is one of our coworkers, Jenny, who you don't see on the show, but if you have been to our store, then you've met her undoubtedly and she also puts it together yeah. uh, as far as collecting the screens for this show so she collects the screens for us so she's definitely part of the show even though you don't see her face anyway she this will be her first 
published work, I guess you could say. Um, she's been published in the letter pages of Marvel, but not her artwork. She is an artist, a very talented artist, and she is one of a few different collaborators for this 140-page anthology. So they, this Kickstarter, um, so we'll put a link to it in our description below. It's only been up for three, day, three days. I think this is day yep. three. It's already up to $17,000 of its $21,000 goal. So I definitely think it will make it, but they've got a lot of great rewards. The You can get a physical copy of it for $28. That's the, there are tiers even below that, but you can actually get a copy of the book for $28. Um, Let's see, we got a couple other tiers, so at $45 and $60, there's some bonuses. It's got a cover that you're seeing here by Elisa Romboli, who did the Alice in Leatherland series and A Thing Called Truth. So it's definitely got some major talent behind it, so it's, it's, it's a good one, I think, to get. Um, and we definitely want to support our co-workers and Jenny, so congratulations to her. She will definitely have a comic published in this anthology. Yep. So <laughs> the way the way to order this is you just go to Kickstarter and search for The Color of Always and you can order it that way. If you are um, somebody who shops with us, however, we've ordered it under the retailer tier. You can ask us for one and when it arrives, it's, it's like you're pre-ordering it through us. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to clarify that. Next up, I was trying to figure out how to introduce this one. Like, ready, <laughs> set, Star Wars? <laughs> Uh, this is really funny. Uh, this is like the the last thing I thought would pair up, but this is Star Wars High Republic Adventures <laughs> Galactic Bake Spectacular or Galactic Bake Off Spectacular. Um, this is a 40 pa 48 page one shot where um, two Jedi buckets of blood, uh, that's the Jedi on the left, who he's called that because he's actually a doctor, and uh, Cantim Sai face off in a baking competition and they both must bake uh, Master Yoda's special pastry recipe. <laughs> it is the weirdest concept, but I'm really excited for this because, I mean, the British Baking Show is a, a, a worldwide phenomenon. People are all into it. And uh, <clears throat> I, this is kind of the first um, thing kind of parroting that I've seen. So uh, this is going to be really fun. Uh, as the contestants are baking, they're also telling stories, so I think you're going to get a little bit of that anthology storytelling that the Star Wars Adventures does so often. Uh, this also includes a recipe for Yoda's pastry, yes. so <laughs> you can make it at home. I was, I was wondering if it has real-world ingredients or it's stuff, it's like, you know... They might have to translate it to, like, well, on Earth this would be... Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Because uh, Star Wars, I don't think there's a single thing other than, like, bread that's the same. we got to bake it and bring it on the show when this, when <laughs> oh, this yeah, comes yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, hopefully Yoda asked for it to be, like, cut in the shape of his own head. Because he's, like, really into branding. Uh, so this is really cool. It's just a one-shot. It's goofy, but I'm excited about it. Because why not? Um, yep, that is Star Wars High Republic Adventures Galactic Bake Off Spectacular. There is just the A cover for this. All right, so Arrow Smith is back. So uh, this is a character and a book by Kurt Busick with Carlos Pacheco doing the art. So Arrow Smith is a character. He is in World War One, but if World War One also had dragons and magic involved, and so in this, uh, it's a six-issue miniseries where um, Fletcher Arrowsmith, our main character, he has to go beyond and behind enemy lines to go up against a new uh, terrible force who could, sp who could uh, possibly bring about the doom of the Allies. So if you like your um, World War stuff mixed up with, with magic and you know, dragons and other stuff, this is probably for you. So uh, this is our regular cover by uh, interior artist Carlos Pacheco. Then we have this Johnson variant. We have this Jones variant. And lastly, this Howard Chaikin variant. All right, next up is a new series called Quad. This is from Behemoth Comics. It is um, about 
four generations after a massive solar storm has hit Earth. We have rebuilt. We, I say this, this has happened to us for real. Uh, anyway, Earth has rebuilt, and we're going to follow our main character here named Tara and her cat as they take a job out in the middle of nowhere. She's a mechanic, so not too much to uh, discover about this book yet. There are some preview pages. Luckily, there were quite a few. There are about six pages. The art looks great. It is created by Eduardo Schall, who did the art and the uh, writing for this one. So it looked, the preview pages looked really good, but not too much to say about it yet, since just not a lot of info on it yet. I'm guessing her cat's name is Elvis. Her cat's name is Elvis. Okay. Tara and Elvis. So it's going to be uh, focusing on them and the... Um, it says that they, the job is, is not quite what it seems. It's not so easy as it seems. So we have a few different covers for this one. For quad number one, the first one was by Eduardo Scholl. The second one is by Santos. Cover C is by Sanchez. And the last up, we have the Ferragato cover D. Next up, this one's <laughs> super weird. Uh, this is Everything Sucks. I don't believe that, but the characters in this book think so. Um, this is about Noah and Kala, and they are two kind of slacker, um, just homebodies who uh, are really hungry and they want to go get some food. But that means going out into the outside world, which sucks. So <laughs> this uh, it says it is a uh, combines 90s animation nostalgia, sitcom antics, and a, a hint of stoner comedy to craft this uh, this fun comedy series. Um, I like the art on the cover because it's got a little bit of like Rugrats. I was, was going to say line art a lot and everything. Of Rugrats art. I see Rocco's Modern Life. Yeah, yeah. Kind of Rocco colors, especially the title and everything. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it looks like they they did that thing where you hit the '90s, but like you can't pinpoint it on one thing. Mm -hmm. It's like they just kind of captured the whole look of it. Um, and what's very '90s about this too? It comes with a sticker and a poster. So I think that is very fitting for a 90s comic um, inspired book. Okay, so this is The Adventures of Adrian James. This is a maxi series. That means 12 issues. This I don't know if this was ever originally published somewhere else. I don't think so, but the publisher is Heavy Metal Magazines. So I'm guessing she's probably a character from Heavy mm -hmm. Metal, and now they're doing like a full series on her. So the write-up for this, the solicitation, I mean, it's like three paragraphs. It's like they, they had so much to say, but it's high adventure amongst the stars. So this is definitely sort of a, takes place in space. And um, in this galaxy, there's this artifact that um, lets you control everything. You know, it's just sort of the MacGuffin <laughs> artifact that lets you control everything. Well, Adrian James and her partner at the time were after it, and he gets killed. He happens to be the leader of their nation. And so she has to continue her hunt for this powerful artifact that all these other treasure hunters are after while also having to take over the mantle of running this nation all of a sudden. Um, so that's what I got out of reading like three paragraphs <laughs> of, and then this and this and this and this. That, that's the summary of it. So uh, if that sounds cool to you, if you like stuff in Heavy Metal Magazine, you know it's going to be a really far out, way out story. This might be for you. So here's the regular cover. And then they're soliciting the number two at the same time. Wow. Not exactly sure why they're doing that. It, you know, there's a lot of issues with um, printing issues mm -hmm. and paper shortages. Maybe they had to kind of put them together. So if you want this one, I would definitely sign up because as a retailer, it's not really good when they make us order the number two before mm -hmm. the number one is even ordered. So. But I bet it's going to be pretty cool, and I bet the people who want it know that they want it based on Heavy Metal Magazine yep. source material. All right, next up is Perhapanauts. You guys may remember this. They had a previous series out for the Perhapanauts. This is a Black Caravan in print, and basically it is about a group of paranormal investigators who are best friends, but the group is made up of paranormal creatures. So you have Bigfoot, Mothman, uh, Ghosts teaming up to investigate things. So Mothman has a GPS that is a time-traveling GPS, and they go back to the year 1903 for some investigations. So that is what this new series is about. This is un 
undoubtedly going to be a mini series, but this is starting off with number one. Oh, this next it. up is I didn't know I hadn't seen the cover of this one. This is New Men number one. No, it's not about uh, Newman <laughs> from Seinfeld. And when I said it, I realized I said it that way. Um, so what's funny is I tried to do some research. There was a Newman series. Uh, back in 1994 by Rob Liefeld. Um, can't really tell if this is related to that or not, because I know a lot of those kind of properties go off to different publishers. This is from Action Lab, um, but this is uh, issue number one of four, and in the future, those that face death may be granted superpowers. So you have people acting very recklessly, running into burning buildings or tying themselves to train tracks mm. just in the hopes of getting superpowers. And it says, you know, a lot of people try it. Very few actually get them. The rest of them uh, are seriously hurt or die because of their attempts. Um, but the ones that do get them are known as the new men. And they uh, are being hunted by a bounty hunter named Shade which does seem very 90s, bounty hunters and, and one word names. So, yep, this is uh, our cover A, and then we have the cover B by Akande. Both wraparound covers too, yep. you can see. All right, so next up, we're gonna show you cool covers and other comics. The other comics will be issues number two and three, a series that maybe you read the number one of and you forgot to sign up for, so we're here to remind you. But we're also just going to show you some covers that are awesome. So let's begin with King Spawn number six. This is the regular cover. There is a variant, but the variant cover is not ready for our show, so we don't have it yet. Just want to let people know who want all the covers. Make sure that you ask your store for that because it is not available to see. But uh, this follows the shocky revelation of Disruptor's true identity, which happened at the end of, or in last issue of yep. King Spawn. The one we got this week. Mm -hmm. All right, next up is Crimson Cage number two from AWA. Upshot, this is the blood-drenched pro-wrestling retelling of Macbeth in five parts. Number one <laughs> came out this past week, and number two is coming out soon, so add it to your list if you liked it. It's a great elevator pitch. <laughs> Next up is Rush, or The Rush, number three. Uh, we've had a lot of people sign up for this. Cool. You know, it's, it's been kind of a slow burn, but people have been coming in, getting it off the wall and everything. People are really enjoying the series. And, uh, of course, this follows the story of Nettie Bridger as she uh, traverses the Yukon to the small town of Broken Hoof looking for her lost son. Uh, and she encounters giant spiders and monsters. Uh, but the scariest thing of all may be the uh, the people there, the miners and people hunting for gold. So, Yeah, issue two is great. I, I recommend this series thus far. Real, real cool Another setting. Another strong uh, from Vault. Vault really mm -hmm. has some big books right now. Yeah, they have some talented people over there. So this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number issue number 125. And look what it says. It says Teenage Mutant punk frogs that's because the turtles come face to face with another territorial group called the punk frogs isn't that awesome so i i when i saw this i'm like punk frogs i remember something about this they were in the cartoon i was wondering if that's these yeah um well i don't know if it's these yeah but they there was a group of punk frogs in the cartoon you know it was like just one episode so this is going to be their first appearance in the mainstream universe and i say that because i did some digging around and they were in a story but they were from a parallel universe yeah. so it didn't really count it kind of counted kind of didn't but regardless you know i still think this is a pretty noteworthy issue i want to see what's up with these punk frogs yeah what genghis and uh, napoleon uh, oh. I forgot what their name. They're all named after. Yeah, I like, don't remember the names at all, really. Yeah, that's that's all the time I okay. have to <laughs> spend on the internet. Oh, very cool. <laughs> Animal Castle number two. It feels like such a while since the number one came out, giving everybody a long time to add it to their list. This was such a surprise hit. Maybe not a surprise for everybody. Jason read it, loved it. I'm going to chalk up all the success of it to your recommendation to of recommendation. it on the show. <laughs> no, it's a really like, tried and true premise. Um, just you know, Animal Farm, there is uh, also the animals in the castle. 
and some insurrection happening. This is actually pretty brutal and bloody. It is not a kid's book. You may have read Animal Farm when you were in middle school. Maybe don't read this if you're in middle school. <laughs> I don't know why you're watching this if you're in middle school. Anyway, Animal Castle number two is coming out if you like number one or miss out. I like I now. like the covers are doing here. I mean, look how stark mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And the more you look at it, the more it's like, you know, the meek having to pull, you know, the big. Yeah, yeah and like his just, posture and everything. Everything is... about it is just so unfair. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's almost like they're used to their positions, which yeah. is totally what this is about. This is a fun series. When I, when we originally did the uh, comics from the future for the first one, I was like, we had stray dogs. Like we were talking about, this is the time of the animal yeah. um, led series and didn't disappoint. And we have another cover for this one as well. This is the B cover. It is called the Delep Asler the Rat cover B. Next up is just to remind you of Gilliam March's Laura and Other Stories number three. Um, this is a creator owned book by Gilliam March, who is. Uh, prolific, working on Batman, working on Joker right now, and uh, this one sounded funny because our protagonist, Laura, is seeking inspiration for her art, and she might get a little help from Gilliam March himself, so he wrote himself and drew himself into his own book, which is always kind of a fun thing, a very Grant Morrison uh Frank Miller type thing to do. He needs to have a conversation with Donny Cates. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most I can say. Cause that's, that's pretty. It's pretty recent in something. Yeah. Okay, so this is No Holds Barred issue number two. So we just want people to know if you liked issue number one, here's your chance to sign up for the full series to not miss out on this number two. Somebody's after Shakespeare. He wants to hurt him. <laughs> in fact, some people will the Bard of Avon get away unscathed. Or unscathed, as he would say. <laughs> so here's the A cover by Carrie, and here is the B cover by Gu Gao G O U X. I'll have to look up how to pronounce Go. it. Go. Go. That yeah. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> the B cover by Go. Speaking of Shakespeare, <laughs> <laughs> here is Kiss. <laughs> Phantom Obsession, we have fun. Uh, Kids <laughs> Phantom Obsession number five. This is cover B. Uh, just kind of a cool Star Child cover. So, there you go. <laughs> what said? Lick it up. <laughs> but uh, uh, this is Purgatory number four, the cover B by Kredansky. We've had more people sign up for some Dynamite books and everything recently. They've really kind of upped their game on all of their series. So this is the uh, Kredansky cover, and also there is another TMNT homage cover. So for all of y'all collecting all of the homage TMNT covers, they're continuing. This one's pretty cool. Yep, and this is one of those covers that you may not have seen anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Like, we had to scour the internet. We just got it on the show, you know, probably like 20 minutes before we started. <laughs> so that's we, we try. We really try here. Okay, so next up here is Red Sonia, Black, White, and Red, number six. This is the Lee variant. So this is not the A cover, this is the, the Lee variant, L-I. And this has uh, different stories, you know, the anthology style. Three different stories. We got a story by Phil Hester, one by Amy Chu, and one by Jacob Edgar. All right, and next up we have Primordial, number five. I can't believe this is just a six-part series. It's been really popular and gaining steam. Uh, this is the cover B, the Francovia cover in this. The spaceship piloted by the space animals is approaching Earth. How and where will they land? All right, pop quiz. Is that Leica, Abel, or Baker? Uh, Ab <laughs> Abel. Close. It's Baker. Dang. How is it you not didn't close? Name the other one. It's just wrong. <laughs> because he's the other, he's the other primate. Yeah, you didn't yeah. name the dog. You didn't That's the name good. Leica. Yeah. So, well, it's because Jason's obsessed with Leica and talks about him all the time. I, I like dogs. <laughs> I like space. It's just I like a perfect, space dogs. perfect marriage. <laughs> Next up is New Burn number three. This uh, Chip Zdarsky and Jacob Phillips crime noir series. Um, just a reminder to sign up for it if you haven't yet and you're enjoying it another really really good series really well written series 
All right, so this is knighted number three. Like Andy said, this is a reminder, if you liked it, to sign up for it. The premise is there's just some normal dude named Bob. Anytime you need a normal guy, you find a Bob. <laughs> and he accidentally ended up in a roundabout way killing the city's protector, who is the knight. And he ha he's forced to take up the mantle and become this vigilante. So that's that's the premise, a pretty good premise. But here's issue number three. If you like the first one or two, go ahead and order and sign up for it. All right, this is Maniac of New York. Bronx is burning. Bronx is burning. Is that right? Or I think it's Bronx? the Bronx is burning. Okay, okay. Anyway, sorry. Uh, Maniac of New York, number two. This is the follow-up series to the first Aftershock Maniac of New York series that did really well. Maniac Harry is back and in this horror satire. So if you liked the first volume, know that there's a second one out right now. Number one just came out last week. And this is number two, cover A and cover B. This one sounds fun. This is just in time for Halloween. <laughs> Just missed the mark by just like three months. It's fine. Vampire's Halloween One-Shot. And I think a lot of people will be interested in this because this actually collects some pre-code classic vampire stories, pre-comics code. So your uh, EC horror stuff that is in incredibly hard to find. Um, are a few of the stories are collected here along with vintage ads and uh, some interviews with the editor about putting together this collection of spooky vampire stories. This is our A cover. And then we have the Forte B cover. See, Halloween once a year is not enough. <laughs> so this is for it's your mid-year second Halloween. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're going to get to other printings and graphic novels. So check out this first one. I, I think no matter how much we tell people to order this, it's going to get underordered. It is Something is Killing the Children Slaughter Pack. So this is a bundle of the first five issues of Something is Killing the Children. And they all have new covers painted by David Mack on uh, premium cardstock. Mm. So, of course, the first five issues was the first arc, which was called the Archer's Peak Saga. Something is Killing the Children, I, unless you just got back in the comics or you're under a rock, is a hugely popular James Tynion hit. It was supposed to be a miniseries to begin with, and it was just so awesome. They have kept it going and going. It's turned into its own universe now. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, now spin House of Slaughter spinoff that is doing very well. Um, but this had art by uh, Werther Deladera. So they're doing this little comic pack re release. You got to buy them all. It's not one of them. It's five different issues, all new David Mack covers, and it is $39.99. So with a price like that, you know, we can't just order a thousand of them. Mm -hmm. So you're better off telling your comic store that you want this. All right, now we have a Carnage Black, White, and Blood trade paperback, only $20. Uh, originally this was, they brought it out first in the treasury size, and now they're shrinking it down to a regular size book. So just $20 for the four-part series of Carnage Black, White, and Blood. Next up is Moon Knight by Lemire and Smallwood, the complete collection. This was a really great run on Moon Knight, uh, where he kind of... Uh, created some new um, personas for Moon Knight and everything. Uh, great series. So this collects the whole thing for $34.99. And then we have um, the Marvel Verse. These are kind of the smaller um, collected editions of some classic stuff. This is Marvel Verse Moon Knight. And this actually collects Werewolf by Night 32 and 33, Moon Knight number 13, and Moon Knight Annual from 2019 and Amazing Spider-Man 220. So you get a whole range of Moon Knight stories in this, which also includes his first appearance. So really cool and only $9.99. So here's one for everybody who missed out on Apache Delivery Service number one. And that's exactly no one because <laughs> the number one is not out until January 5th. <laughs> However, it is, they, Dark Horse is saying it has sold out on the distributor level. Um, and so they are selling a second print before the first print even hits stores. Uh, I will say, I do think this sounds really good, though. This it is does. a story yeah. by Matt Kent with art by um, 
Tyler Jenkins. And it's about two men who are searching Vietnam for some gold that was hidden there back in World War II. And this gold might be protected by witches. There's also a serial killer on the loose. Uh, a, a lot of interesting moving components going on in this. But yeah, Dark Horse is claiming that they got way more orders from, from stores than they expected. <laughs> and so they've gone ahead and rushed it back to second print. So this is everybody's first and possibly only chance to order this second print unless you just find it in the wild. Mm. So it's always, I guess, awkward to be like, hey, do you want to buy the second print of something that's not even out yet? <laughs> But, uh, you know, here we are. <laughs> so there you have it. And this is another cover I, we couldn't find in normal sources. I had to mm -hmm. scour the internet to find this one. All right, we have Venom number two, the second printing. And this is the Mo... Let me pronounce this right. This is the Mobili <laughs> variant for number two. So in case you missed number two or whatever happened, here's the second printing. Same with Devil's Reign number one. This is Devil's Reign number one, second printing, this time with the black and white cover. Um, I read issue one of this. It is really good, really great Daredevil stuff. Um, Kingpin stuff involving the whole kind of street level Marvel universe. So if you missed the number one or are trying to collect it all, this is the second printing. All right, here's something really fun. This is God Hates Astronauts, the Omni Megabus trade paperback. This is 696 pages, everything to do with God Hates Astronauts, which is Ryan Brown's sort of uh, solo masterwork, 14 years in the making. So this is going to collect volume 1, 2, and 3, and four different specials, pretty much all the stuff. God Eat It's Astronauts, I mean, the art alone is such a wild ride. It is such a, like, stream of consciousness of just one thing happens after another. There's a guy and his head inflates, explodes, he gets replaced by a ghost horse head. It is just nuts, but it's so cool. So it's hard to describe what the story is about. It is, like, NASA-funded people with superpowers who are also egomaniacs who are trying to stop unregistered space travel mm -hmm. so i mean they they have a job but they don't do it well because their little their their egos get in the way and their petty little things happen instead but it is wild like if you just flip through an issue you're gonna know if you love it or not you can tell it's just him drawing just stuff he wants to draw and like working it into a story but in a really fun way so this is all of it 696 pages first time they ever released it all in this fashion for $39.99. Next up is Star Wars Adventures, The Weapon of a Jedi, the collected. Um, this was only, I believe, only two issues long, so it's only $9.99, but this uh, essentially follows Luke as he's just blown up the Death Star and is trying to figure out, is his life forward going to be as a pilot for the Rebellion, or does he need to choose the path of a Jedi and train for that? And kind of that where that separates where you pick him up um, later on where he's kind of more of a Jedi. So this is a really good um, just little two issue series collected here for only $9.99. And next up is June 1962. I remember they did another one of these Marvel did in I think it was August. I can't remember the previous year they did. But this is basically a snapshot of Marvel in June 1962. And it wasn't just that Amazing Fantasy 15 came out, but it was the first time that Thor held Mjolnir. It had all sorts of other things that happened. So, like I said, I think it's a good description. Just a snapshot of Marvel in this omnibus collected. So you're going to have some Westerns. You're going to have Kid Colt, Millie the Model, Incredible Hulk, Rawhide Kid. So, really neat concept they had here. This is $125. Collects all sorts of stuff. We have two different covers for it. This is the Javier Rodriguez cover. And then this is the direct market cover. And you guys can tell what this is. This is the Ditko cover. All right. So another one from Marvel is Mighty Marvel Masterworks Daredevil Volume 1. So this is soft cover. And because of that, it's only $15.99. But this will get you Daredevil issues 1 through 11. And I mean like the original Daredevil mm -hmm. written by Stan Lee and Wally Wood. Art by Bill Everett. 
So if you want to read all those classic stories for just $15.99, here's a great way to do it. They have two covers on this one. This is the uh, Cho cover. And then we have the sort of original, mm -hmm. you know, cover. So they, they call this direct market one, but mm -hmm. it's a, the the old style art. Look, he's got the <laughs> yellow suit and everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ke kept it for the first two issues, got rid of it in issue number three. <laughs> or, or was it seven? I believe it's issue three is when he switches over. He the didn't have suit. it long. Yeah. All right, switching to something very modern. This is X Force, and this is from the 2019 series. It is a hardcover for forty dollars. It collects one through twelve. This is by Ben Percy, and the cover here is a Dotterman cover, who did all those really really cool different multiple versions of different character covers, and they've, those are awesome. Um, congrats on you if you have collected all of those thus far. Anyway, this is forty dollars for the hardcover of X Force one through twelve. Next up is Star Wars Insider, issue 208. We've got a couple of different covers for this. First off, this is the uh, Virgin edition of the FOC cover uh, with Echo from the Bad Batch on there. Then we have... So, they didn't have a trade dress one. So oh. you'll just, for the trade dress, <laughs> they have a trade dress version yeah. of this. You'll just have to imagine what that looks like because this is the only one they have up. <laughs> Um, but there are these other ones. Yeah, so then we have the newsstand edition. And then we have the super cool uh, previews exclusive edition. They've been doing these for uh, a couple of them with this kind of trading card look on there. Yes, this time with Bo-Katan. Good covers right there. And that's it. That is our short show because we're so close to the holidays. We'll be back next week with something. But who knows I guess. what? Something. But because be something. that's going to be what the twenty fourth. Yeah, that's Christmas Eve. Yeah. So we'll yeah. see what goes on. Just that's why you need to make sure you stay subscribed, guys. Wink, wink. Uh, so that you can see what goes down next week on the Christmas Eve FOC. But if you guys need a comic shop, if you know and love us and want to put your orders through us, please send us your stuff by this Sunday. And we will see you guys next week. Merry yeah, I Christmas. Can, I can promise Christmas magic. Megan will wear a Santa hat. I'm making all these sure. promises right here that I haven't talked to sure. them about. I'll do it. Big surprises, <laughs> guest appearances, all of that. An on-air snowball fight until the camera gets hit <laughs> and we re regret it and we're off the air for weeks trying to fix it. But yeah, happy holidays to everybody. Happy uh, Spider-Man No Way Home release. And we will see you next time. Yep. Bye.